Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Deanna, and today I really wanna share with you guys how my low buy has been going so far this year. Um, I can't believe it's already almost June. By the time you guys see this video, it will probably be June, and half the year is already almost gone. I can't believe it has gone by so stinking fast. It's gonna be summertime. All right, so the low buy, I started in January. Um, sometime mid-January is when I kind of got everything dialed in of how I wanted to organize it and all of that. So um, yeah, so January was kind of a eh, you know, not a good, not necessarily the best month uh, because I wasn't totally like prepared with all of my like boundaries and my spreadsheet and all of that. But anyways, so yes. I did start kind of in mid-January and have been, you know, meticulously tracking my spending and saving all my receipts, putting it in my spreadsheet so that I could see where my money is going. I don't know how many years of my life, so many years of my life gone by where, you know, all the money gets spent and I have no idea where it went other than maybe like gas and food. But other than that, a lot of times it's just all a blur and I have nothing to show for it. So now I, like I said, I have like this detailed spreadsheet of my little categories of things that I buy um, and where it's going. So I know exactly where every penny went of the budget that I have every month. I've been trying to film this video um, and I did do one actually like a week or so ago filmed it and it turned out so bad. <laughs> like the footage looked so bad. And I don't know what it was, the lighting, like I looked so weirdly orangey, yellowy, jaundice if you will. <laughs> it was not good and I had no idea how to fix it. Like I tried to do the white balancing thing with the editing program that I just use iMovie and it just, was not working. I could not get it dialed in and uh, I had to scrap it and I was so bummed out. <laughs> it's not as easy as you might think like getting everything set up so that you just look like normal, you know, like your normal skin. And right now I actually set up right in front of my bedroom window so there's some kind of overcast light coming through. I have one light to my left over here um, that's helping to just hopefully balance things out and I did a little bit of research for some camera settings so hopefully we shall see <laughs> it turns out a little bit better and I don't have to scrap it but anyways so yes I want to do a little bit of an update um, and six months have almost it's almost been six months half the year already gone can't believe it and I would say that I have been doing on a scale of like bad to great, I think I'm probably in the middle somewhere around fair to good because um, I have had some wonky months. So right now I'll just give you a quick rundown of what my rules were um, for the low buy when it came to things like beauty products, makeup, skincare, the things that I love to buy. Um, I have been on like a refill only low buy with those items. So if something runs out, I go and purchase it again. With skincare, I didn't really have an issue with overbuying crazy expensive skincare or stock stockpiling products or anything like that. So I've been basically doing that already. Um, but yeah, so I really wanted to find alternatives to some of the more expensive things. So I've been doing that and enjoying that very much. Makeup specifically, um, no new eyeshadows. And that has proven to be not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, not crazy awful hard, but just not as easy as I kind of thought in the beginning of the year because there have been a few items that have caught my attention, caught my eye, that I just put them on my wish list and I'm just waiting on that still towards the end of the year. And if they're still on there, I'll relook at it. 
make sure that it's something I would still want and then perhaps plan to purchase in the future. Other items, things such as like clothing, home good, homewares, things like that, food, um, I'm taking it into consideration as far as um, just staying within within budget and not overspending. So my budget has been about $200 a week to spend on whatever it is that I choose. That is the money that I have after all bill regular bills have been paid. It goes towards gas, food, gifts that I might want to buy, anything that I might need to replace as far as skincare. And usually every month there's one or two little things I need to replace with skincare. Um, did I say clothing, houseware, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> and so, yeah, or experiences, going to the movies, um, you know, going to do something with a friend, with my husband, with my stepson, us all together, all of those things that may come up on any given month. So I have been tracking those things meticulously just to see where all the money has gone, what I have been spending on. And I'm not going to go over an every itemized little thing um, at all because I just, mm, I don't really want to do that and tell you every single little thing that I purchased. I just kind of want to give you an overview of how each month has gone. Like I said, in January, I um, was kind of, I did overspend a little bit, not too much, a little over $100, I think it was. I hadn't had everything set up like I needed to have it set up. I didn't have my spreadsheet ready. I didn't have all of my, you know, boundaries in place yet mentally. I didn't have it like charted out yet. That's not really my excuse, but I guess it kind of is a little bit. But yes, yeah, so January, I was kind of in my old ways from 2018 and, um, not yet fully 100% prepared with all logistically, I guess. So February and March um, were pretty good months for me. I would say those were good months, no overspending at all. I didn't like try to dip into my savings to pay for something and I tracked everything really well and I was really, really happy with February and March and um, just felt really proud of myself for just sticking to it. And then April, April was, April was good. April, I'm just trying to think. April was good, um, did not overspend. April was the month though that I did break one of my rules and I purchased a little $4.99 <laughs> Wet n Wild 10 pan, 10 pan, I say that weird, 10 pan. I did purchase the Wet n Wild, one of their 10 pan palettes at Walgreens. And I did, recently I did a little like get ready with me and I did my confession that I broke one of the rules and I purchased the $5 palette. It's the called VI Purple and it just it just jumped off the shelf at me and like hit me in the face and so i bought it <laughs> but yeah i didn't you know break the bank i didn't dip into my savings to purchase it um but the principle of the matter was what got me was the fact that i said i'm not going to buy any more eyeshadows and i bought that one um, and it's really, really pretty. It's a good one if you don't have it. If you don't have it and you're not on a low buy or no buy, check it out. They're at Walgreens only. It's an exclusive, that particular color selection, the VI Purple, is exclusive to Walgreens. Anyways, oh my gosh, I'm getting totally off track talking about it, but in the month of April, I did purchase that palette, and I really do like it a lot. It's really, really good. May has been a long month. And it just feels like it's dragging on and I can't wait for June <laughs> right now. And yeah, there's just been a lot going on. And um, so I would say I would give the month of May, the month of May, so I'm giving the month of May that I did not good to fair. You know, I didn't really do that good. I did do some overspending because in the beginning of the month it was, um, so we had Mother's Day 
and my younger sister, my little baby sister, Cassandra. It was her birthday, and yes, of course, I wanted to splurge and buy them gifts and take them out, and which I did, which was absolutely fabulous. But then I also decided to gift myself <laughs> in the process of gifting them and spending time with them. And um, that was where I kind of misstepped a little bit because I absolutely, like I said, I absolutely am overjoyed to give them good gifts and spend the time with my sisters, with my mom, and do all of that, loved it, totally worth it. But I have to remember, when I do that, doesn't mean that I also get to go buy a couple new outfits, which I did, <laughs> which I really like, a couple new, you know, clothing items that I purchased, or doesn't mean, you know, to splurge on other things because I was in a kind of a splurgy mood, you know? And so, yeah, I kind of, you know, I don't think it was a 100% complete fail because the things that I did purchase were thought out. I spent time um, trying things on. I took the I actually went into a store and shopped around. I knew some of the things that I was really looking for um, and got them. And so I don't necessarily consider that a fail just because it didn't necessarily, it wasn't impulsive like, oh, I'm at Target, I'm going to run through the sale rack and grab a few things that I haven't bought out or that I haven't even tried on, which has, you know, been something that I would regularly do. Oh, one other thing, I had to buy, I had a very expensive dental procedure, kind of half of it the beginning of the month, the second half towards mid-month this month and I had to have a crown replaced. Oh, have you ever had a crown? And anyway, they're expensive. Even though, thank God for insurance, it covered the majority of it, I still had to pay about $600, which I did use my savings for that, which that's what it's there for. If you need to get, you know, a big purchase or something like that comes up. Yeah, I had a crown in my mouth uh, that had been there for like 10 years, maybe a little over 10 years, and it was not, it was just time to replace it. And so I had to have that done, which costs a lot of money. And so that was just discouraging, you know, because I had to, it's something important. It's something that you have to get done, but it's like getting your car repaired or, paying for you know just something you don't <laughs> want to pay for and you don't want to spend that money on so that just kind of like blew some wind out of my sails for the month of may having to do that i know that it's important i know that it had to get done and i was expecting that it was going to be expensive i just it just bummed me out because that was a big chunk of savings that I had to use and now I have to, you know, more time has to build up for me to regain that back and just be where I was at before. So it just felt like oh, somebody just stepped on both of my feet really, really hard. <laughs> and yeah, so maybe I felt like all is lost for the month of May. Spend now while you can. And <laughs> so I did go a little bit over. I'm so dramatic about it. But anyways, these are the feelings. These are the feelings that I get when I'm thinking about what I had to spend my money on this month. Man, I do love my dentist office though. They're great people. I've been going there forever. And yeah, so there's that. So there's a quick rundown of um, so far this year, how I have been doing. And in another video, I would like to share some of my favorite things that I've gotten so far in my low buy year and show you guys some stuff that I feel like was really worth spending some of my budget on so far. So let's go into my tips that I have that would hopefully help you out. These are things that have really been helping me um, so far this year. So I have my phone with some notes. Um, number one, I put down, don't shop when you are tried, when you are tried, when you are being tried, <laughs> definitely when you are tired, um, stressed or upset about something. 
not a good time to shop. Just like, you know how they say, don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry um, because you're gonna end up buying junk or you're gonna end up, you know, buying a snack there like a can of Pringles and eating the whole thing in the car before you get home. Um, like I do <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Same thing with shopping whether it be online shopping or going out shopping, don't try to do it when you are under duress of any sort. You know, um, you're gonna end up get with stuff that you probably don't need or overspending, and then you're gonna have regret. You're gonna end up with feeling bad about it and disappointed in yourself and just not feeling good. That's the thing with things is that it, they just offer this momentary happiness um that just doesn't last you know and especially when you are under stress of some sort or you're upset with something your mental state is you know taken down a couple notches when you're under stress or you're tired or something like that you're not on your game and something as important as really trying to stick to a budget and saving money and all of that you know you may jeopardize that because of just timing, just bad timing. Go home, you know, that's so many times I've had to tell myself that over and over again, especially under times of stress, especially feeling overtired. Um, just go home, Deanna, just go home. Just go home and rest. I would say 100% of the time, that feeling of I've got to go to Target or I've got to go over here or I just want to, you know, run through CVS to look at the make, like, uh, you know, every single time 100% of the time just going home getting comfortable sitting down with my husband eating a meal watching tv or whatever the, that feeling gone just gone and I promise you like that will happen you just need to get out of that space of like you know just that magnet that it is to draw you in and like I said whether that mean you physically going to a place or even just shopping online and just spending the time on your phone or your computer or whatever looking at all the stuff and wanting to buy it and then having regret afterwards which is never ever ever a good feeling no regrets no regrets so yeah. so another tip is just slowing down altogether and that's so hard to do it's so hard to slow down your day or those moments and press into what your heart is really feeling what your mind is thinking and the perspective that you have because you know when things move so fast whether you're sad or happy or whatever things are moving so fast and you're making decisions when maybe you shouldn't when maybe you need to slow down the moment and get a different perspective and so many times I failed at doing that and didn't listen to that knowing that I shouldn't be spending this much or I, sh I just need to go home or I need to really spend some time with my thoughts and I know that I'm feeling these other things but I don't want to pay attention to it right now <laughs> I don't want to take the time and and that just burned me so many times and I don't know about you if that's ever happened to you where you've made poor decisions um because of a stressful situation or something like that and not taking the time to get a new perspective or maybe you've you know ended up saying things you wish you never had said or something like that or found yourself in a situation that you were like bummed that you were in because you didn't slow down and really think about what was happening so I find that with um, that urge to shop and spend um, I would take the time and I'm, and I'm still trying to do that every time it comes up to take the time what am I feeling what does my heart what does my body what does my mind really really need right now is it rest is it just to go home and see my husband and have a meal you know is it stress from work or a relationship or something like that that's caught giving me these feelings that's drawing me to my go-to like 
whoopee, <laughs> the whoopee of shopping, like needing that to soothe. And yeah, so it really does take mindful, like it's a mindful practice to slow down in life. It is very hard because things move so fast and you have to be extremely intentional um, about slowing yourself down. You know, I went through about a year and a half of some counseling therapy a few years back and that was one of the number one things that I remember her just drilling into me, slow down, just slow down. Because when your mind starts to go to all these different places for whatever reason, you move too fast and you make decisions too fast and you're in the wrong headspace, you're in the wrong perspective, your eyes aren't seeing the same. And it's so true. And so that's one of the number one things that I got from that, you know, among many other things and insights from therapy and counseling. But I just remember that was such a huge thing was learning to slow yourself down. It's not easy. It is not easy and it's only getting harder, you know, just with life and things moving so fast. So yes, that would be one of my number one tips is to slow yourself down and you may find yourself just realizing like that thing is not what I really need. I really need just to go home. <laughs> I just need to go home and get comfortable and that's it. Um, not buy the stuff. And also to stop shopping as a reward for a good day or good behavior, which I would do often as well. <laughs> Feeling good, I'm on cloud nine, I had a great day at work or something really cool happened. I want to buy something for myself. And um, you know, I'm a, overall a pretty happy person on the daily waking up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and sleeping well, all these things. And it's like, if I went shopping every time I was happy, I would absolutely be in trouble big time. And so I can't do that as a reward either. Yes, it is nice to buy yourself something and it does make you feel happy. And I'm not against that at all. I like that you can get pleasure out of something beautiful and new um, or old if you like to get old stuff but um, like out of something beautiful and that's new to you and I think that we are people who need beauty in our lives the beauty of nature the beauty of art uh, doing something artful doing something creative and constructive with our hands and our body and all of that and seeing beauty is really important i think that we were created to love and desire beautiful things and that is something i feel that is just god breathed into us of wanting beauty and looking at the sky and seeing something beautiful, looking into nature and seeing something beautiful, looking at someone's art or the way somebody did their makeup or whatever and you think it's beautiful. We desire those things and I think it's a good thing, but it also needs to be directed to the right things for you, not just to gain all this stuff and be overwhelmed with it. So the good days that I have and those feelings of wanting to, you know, go buy something shiny and new for myself when it may not be in the budget or whatever, um, you know, just not always going to that as my reward is buying something new, whatever that new thing is. And sometimes, yes, it can be, but not every time. And really what my aim is in practicing and cultivating other habits and other things that just reinforce those good vibes, like um, calling upon the other things that I already know that give me that beauty feeling, that desire for, for beauty to fill my heart and my eyes and my mind. I can get that from so many other things besides buying something new. I live really close to the beach. Going for a walk on the beach does that for me. It's beauty. It's something I desire and it's something that fulfills me way more actually in the long run than, than an item that I purchased. 
um, knitting, sitting and knitting and creating something with my hands, this tangible beauty uh, that I created and that I designed um, and thought of the colors and all of that is something that is beauty to me and is so fulfilling. Um, even just sitting with my husband on the couch watching a show <laughs> or even in silence sometimes um, is beauty to me and is so fulfilling. It could be, you know, spending time with a loved one or doing something that you really enjoy. A lot of times for me too, it's physical activity, um, getting a good workout in. I recently have picked up roller skating again. I've gone twice so far and now I'm ready for roll bounce too. Did you all see that movie, 2004 or five? Roll bounce. <laughs> I'm ready on my roller skates to be an extra whenever they make roll bounce too. Call me. Okay, so yes, cultivate other things that are in you or other creative desires that you have or go somewhere that you think is beautiful um, that's not Sephora or Ulta or the mall. <laughs> and you will receive that just from those things around you. And that's what I have found so wonderful for me during this low bias is cultivating those things, those other things that mean beauty to me, that mean a reward to me. I hope that that made sense. And when you are feeling good and you are proud of yourself or you had a great day or something great really happened, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go out and buy a gift for yourself. Sometimes it does, but not every single time. That shouldn't be like your number one go-to. And that's, for me, that can't be my number one go-to at all. Um, so that is something I've been trying to learn and practice so far this year. And I'm doing okay at it. I think I'm good at it now. I'm getting good. Good to great by the end of this year. And so yes, um, another tip, yeah, is try your best to stop browsing and shopping online. That for me was a huge, huge thing. One, it's a huge time sucker for sure. Hours and hours would go by and I'm just browsing and browsing. <sighs> so I have really tried to stop doing that and again look to other things to fill that time whether it be needing to slow down and think about what's going on in my mind, dealing with things and that's it's hard to do. It's hard to do. Um, it's definitely not easy but it's necessary. Um, for change, I believe. It's been necessary for me for, for change. I think that I have definitely been saving a lot of time or just adding more time to my days by not spending so much time doing that. I do here and there. I know that by doing that constantly every day, multiple times a day, is not good for me. And it may not be good for you either. So trying my best to continue in the pattern of just stopping doing that and doing something else, distracting myself or um, calling upon the other things that I enjoy and that bring me fulfillment in life um, to take the place of something that's not so good for me and not so worthy of so much time. I think one of my last things is just getting creative with what you have, loving what you have. Your wardrobe, if there's things in your wardrobe that you don't like wearing, that don't fit you, that, you know, get them out. And if you have a certain budget for clothes, think about what it is that you want. You know, I look at my Pinterest boards of styles and things that I like, and that's what I've been going off of when I have gone shopping for clothes. I've discarded or, you know, donated things that, or given away things I don't want anymore. And I look to the things that I've thought about and kind of already picked out and would like to try on for myself. And I go to that so that I can be more mindful about my purchases and not just doing things at random so often and impulsively. If I'm bringing new things in, they have to be well thought out. I'm getting creative with, like for me, like with my makeup stuff. So many of us who may be really into beauty products and eyeshadows and makeup and stuff like that, it is fun to try the newest things or try, you know, what people on the tube are, are reviewing and all of that. For me, continuing to add on different stuff, new different stuff, 
on a consistent basis, especially like eyeshadow palettes, which is like my favorite thing, it's too much. It's too overwhelming, it's too much, and then I feel bad about all the things that I've already purchased in the past that I still really, really like, but feel like I can't use them anymore because now I have to use the new thing, or I shouldn't be using the new thing anymore because I really should be using the old things. Like, I just wanna cut all of that out. I wanna keep my collection to a manageable number of things that I have so I feel like I can use everything, that I can, leave the space for creativity in my mind with the stuff that I have. And that's what I find for me like sparks the creativity is when I'm not too cluttered with too much stuff. Getting creative with what you have is so important and it's fun and I'm having fun doing that. And even when it comes to um, getting to know my stuff better and realizing, hmm, I don't really like this as much as I thought I did. I'm gonna let it go or it's gonna get put to the side to where I can make decisions at a later date or whatever it is. And it just brings me personally like so much satisfaction knowing that, hey, like I'm getting good use out of this stuff. I paid my hard earned money to buy these things and I'm using them and I'm loving it. <laughs> it's such a good, good, feeling and it just spurs me on to continue because it's such a good feeling to know that you're getting good use out of the products that you have and you see things like you know that you're using just be emptied you know and you don't have a ton of backups you just have like that one and you use it all up how fun is that it's fun to know that hey i really enjoy this product and I used it all up, and now I get to go get another one if I want to. So that's it. Those are my feelings, my thoughts, hopefully some encouraging tips that will help you if you are yourself on a low buy year this year, or on a budget, or maybe even on a no buy. Um, let me know. Are there tips um, that you have that are different that really help you stay focused towards the good positive change that you're trying to make in your life with whatever habits that you have or maybe you do some of the same stuff or have some of the same thoughts and feelings that i do about all this stuff let me know that too so yes on to better things for the rest of this year i would like to get to a place where i am not pushing my budget to the end like this month i went a little bit over <sighs> not very happy about that the month's over, I'm looking forward to June, looking ahead, um, and I, my goal is to not just not overspend, of course that's always the goal, but to not push my budget that I have every week like to the very tipping point, to that very edge. I wanna end up with more money at the end of the month than I have these last five months um, and not spend every last dime of my budget. That is what I am going for for the month of June. That is my goal. So pray for me. Oh yeah, prayer. I can't forget prayer. So many times I have just prayed, Lord, get me through this day. Because yeah, sometimes you just don't have the strength to think about things so much. And so I would just pray. You know, I would just pray, go home and thank God for all the blessings that I have. Thank God for good health and for work and for hobbies and for my husband and for, you know, everything. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think that prayer is a huge thing. I pray all the time, but especially when you need to slow yourself down and really think about what's going on in your heart and in your mind. Um, and in your world, um, for me, prayer is a huge, huge thing that um, helps to release those things and just give them to God and know that a new day is coming. You're going to go to sleep. You're going to wake up. You're going to forget that you wanted to go to Target or that you wanted to go to Ulta, or that you wanted to go to Sephora, or that you really wanted to spend five hours shopping online. Anyways, so 
that's it. That's the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed yourself as much as I enjoyed sharing this stuff with you. And like I said, if you have any good tips about low buy, no buy, habit changing, you know, leave them down below. Let me know. I would like to know. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. And know that you are a child of God. You were made in the image of God. You are beautiful and you are loved and you are good. All right, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.